All right, so everyone wants to know, can machines actually beat the market picking stocks? Yeah. We're going to dive deep into some research to find out. Mm -hmm. It's from the Technical University of Darmstadt. Okay. And it's a paper from 2022 called Stock Picking with Machine Learning. Cool. This is kind of your cheat sheet on whether algorithms can be the next Warren Buffett. Yeah. You know what I like about this one is they didn't just like test some model in theory. Right. They actually used stock market data. Like the real deal. Yeah. They used weekly data for companies in the S&P 500. Wow. All the way back to 1999. And they applied all sorts of different machine learning approaches. That's a lot of data. Yeah. So were they like trying to predict the exact price a stock would hit? Not really. No, they focused on something way more practical, you know, for investors. Like right. could these models predict which stocks are going to do better than the average in the coming week? Gotcha. So like, you know, more practical for for someone who's actually like trying to make decisions. Exactly. So can machines see the future of the stock market? Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. Well, it's interesting. At first, their accuracy was just a little over 50%. Okay. Barely better than a coin flip. All right. So we're not impressed yet. But here's the thing. There's got to be a catch, right? There's always a catch. When the models were really confident about a pick, their accuracy was way better. Oh. It's like if a model was only 51% confident, right. you'd probably ignore it. Yeah. But if it's like, hey, I'm 80% sure this is going to be a winner, uh -huh. now you're interested. You're listening. You're listening. Okay, so it's not just about predicting, but like knowing how much to trust the prediction. Exactly. Okay, I like that. But we keep talking about these machine learning models. Yeah. There are so many of those things out there. There are. What were they actually using? Yeah, they tested a whole range. Some are simpler, like what's called logistic regressions. It's kind of like, imagine trying to draw a straight line through a bunch of data points. Yeah, okay, so that's like kind of on the simpler side. What about on the more complex side? So they also use things like decision trees and neural networks, right. which try to like mimic how our brains process information, mm -hmm. just with a lot more math. Okay. And to make it even more interesting, they combined all the models oh, wow. into what's called an ensemble model. Okay. So basically it averages out all their predictions. So it's like a diversified portfolio, but for algorithms. Exactly. Got it. And what they found is even though these models work in totally different ways, right. their predictions often disagreed with each other. Oh, really? So they weren't all coming to the same conclusions? Nope. Which actually means that each model was noticing something different. Right. And that's really good for the ensemble model. Yeah. Because it can like use those different perspectives to make a better guess. So you have like a team of robot stock pickers. Pretty much. Each with their own strengths and weaknesses working together. I like it. All right. So let's pretend I'm running a stock picking fund. Okay. Every week, the models tell me their top picks. Mm -mm. The, you know, 50, 100, 200 stocks that they think will beat the market. Okay. What happened? What were the results? Drum roll, please. Hit me. All of the models beat the basic strategy of just buying everything in the S&P 500. But the real winner was the ensemble model. Okay. It delivered a whopping 20.8% return every year. Wow. Compared to just 11.1% for just buying everything. 20.8. That's impressive. It's pretty good. Yeah. But of course, there's a but. There's always a but. Always, a, but, but these models involve a lot of buying and selling. Right. Like a lot of turnover. Okay. So to make this work in real life, you'd need really low trading fees. Yeah, you got to watch out for those fees. You do. All right, okay. so not a get-rich-quick scheme then. Not quite. You need the right tech, the right broker. Uh-huh. And definitely some expertise to manage it all. Right. But still, a 20.8% return, that yeah. gets people's attention. Absolutely. It begs the question, what were they seeing? Yeah. What were they using to make these picks? They looked at what's called feature importance. Okay. Basically, like, figuring out which data was most important gotcha. to their decisions. Yeah. And the answer might surprise you. Okay. 
I love surprises. They found that short-term signals like moving averages and momentum really mattered. So like recent trends in price. Exactly. More than long-term stuff, right. like a company's profitability or its value. So it's like the machines were saying, forget fundamentals. Right? Let's ride the waves. That is surprising. It is. I thought long-term fundamentals were like the key. That's what we've always heard. Right. Yeah. But the machines are on to something else. Okay. And it gets even more interesting when you look at the different styles of each type of model. Hold on. Investment styles for algorithms. Yeah. This is getting good. Tell me more. <laughs> it's like each algorithm has like its own way of looking at the market. Its own personality. Okay. So like the simpler models. Yeah. Those logistic regressions we were talking about. Mm -hmm. They were all about momentum is the stock trending up right. is it trending down gotcha so momentum traders okay but algorithms it's interesting what about those more complex ones do they have like different styles oh yeah for sure okay the neural networks mm -hmm. those were more into like short-term reversals they were looking for stocks that like maybe had just dropped but they thought they were about to bounce back so they were like contrarian investors yeah a little bit Interesting. What about those tree-based models? Yeah. So the trees were a little more balanced. Okay. They used a mix of those like short-term signals and some of those fundamental factors too, like a company's earnings growth. Interesting. So they're taking a little bit of everything. Yeah. A little bit from column A, a little right. bit from column B. But here's the thing. Yeah. Even with all these different approaches, they were often finding like different opportunities. They weren't all saying, buy this one stock. So like a diverse team of analysts. Exactly. Each with their own like area of expertise. Yeah. And they're all like working together to try to find those good investments. That's a good way to put it. Okay. And remember that ensemble model. Yes. The one that combines them all. The one that combines them all, that one consistently outperformed the others. Interesting. Which kind of shows you the power of like combining different perspectives. Like the wisdom of the crowd, but for robots. All right. So we've got these machines seemingly making money yeah spotting these patterns in the data but before we all run out and try to like build our own robot stock pickers yeah the researchers did something really important okay they wanted to make sure this wasn't just a fluke they did they wanted to make sure these models weren't just like working by chance right like is it specific to the u.s stock market exactly or could this be something broader yeah, so they tested them on European stocks. Okay. Using the STOXX 600 index. Okay, and what happened? They worked. The models were successful in Europe too. Wow. So it's not just a US thing. Not just a US thing. Okay. Which suggests that like whatever they're picking up on, it's not just like some quirk of the US market. Yeah. It's something more fundamental. Okay, that's really interesting. It is. But you know, I got to ask, is this really something like the average investor can use. Well, let's be real. Yeah. Most of us don't have access to that kind of fancy tech. Right. And expertise needed to like build this ourselves. Yeah. Plus, there's no guarantee that like these patterns will last forever. Of course. Yeah, the markets change. The markets change. So not exactly like a roadmap to instant riches. Not quite. Okay. But I think even if we can't all become algo traders overnight, yeah. this research asks some really big questions right. about how markets work. Yeah. Because if machines can consistently profit from these, like, short-term patterns, what does that mean for, like, market efficiency? Right, because, like, the, the idea is that markets are pretty efficient. Yeah, that's what we've always heard. Prices already reflect everything. Yeah. But if they can exploit these short-term patterns, right. maybe there's more to the story. It definitely makes you think. Yeah, for sure. It also makes you wonder about like what role technology is going to play in the future of investing. Yeah, like are we all going to be using robots to pick stocks eventually? We'll see. Okay, very interesting. But it is important to remember this is just one study. Oh, for sure. We need more research to really know what's going on. Absolutely. But it definitely gives us some interesting things to explore. It does. Okay, so after all this talk about algorithms and market efficiency, Yeah. What's the takeaway for like everyday investors? Well, I wouldn't recommend like ditching your diversified portfolio just yet. Okay, good, because I was about to. But this research does remind us that like yeah. we need to stay informed, be open to new ideas. Right. And maybe even be a little skeptical of like what we think we know about investing. Yeah, don't be afraid to challenge the status quo. Exactly. And maybe explore some new possibilities. Yeah, because who knows? Maybe the future of investing really is going to be driven by algorithms. All right, well, this is definitely giving me a lot to think about. Me too.
So we've been talking about all these machine learning models for picking stocks. Yeah. And it seems like they have all these different like approaches, investment styles. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious, if you were actually going to build one of these systems, mm -hmm. would you just use one or would you combine them? That's a great question. And honestly, based on this research, combining them seems to be the way to go. Okay. Remember that ensemble model? Yeah, the one that averaged all the predictions? Exactly. That one did the best. Okay. Which suggests that getting insights from these algorithms with different styles, right. what we were talking about, yeah. leads to more robust results. So it's like having a diverse team of experts all weighing in. You get that? Yeah, you get more of a balanced perspective that way. Exactly. But I guess... Even with a team of algorithms at your disposal, uh -huh. you wouldn't want to assume that this research is like a recipe for instant wealth. No, definitely not. It's more like a clue Yeah, that there are these patterns in the market we're only beginning to understand. It's kind of like we think we know so much about investing, but then something like this comes along and you're like... Right. There's always more to learn. Yeah, exactly. And it's uh -huh. research. I mean, it's just scratching the surface. Oh, yeah. It opens up more questions than it answers. Totally. It makes you think, like, how are these models actually doing this? Mm -hmm. And will it work five years from now? Big questions. Yeah, it's almost like we've stumbled onto this uncharted island. I like that. It's exciting. Yeah. But we got to be careful Yeah. before we make any big decisions. Explore it carefully. Exactly. And I think that's what makes this research so compelling. Mm -hmm. It's not just the results. Right. But the questions it makes you ask. For sure. Well, this has definitely given me a lot to think about. Me too. And I hope it's given all of our listeners out there some things to think about as well. Yeah. Maybe even inspired some people to go explore this world of machine learning and finance. It's a fascinating world out there. It is. So that's it for this deep dive into the world of stock picking with machine learning. It's been fun. Thanks for joining us. And remember, keep learning, keep exploring and keep asking questions. Who knows what you might discover? Exactly. Right?